Uh, it's our first fall webinar, and I'm back here with our very own Chris Murner, our director of learning science, and uh, 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 guest we had on. How long has it been, Kimberly? Not not too long. Not too long ago. I want to say maybe a month or May? so. Oh. Time, time means nothing. Well, the days are blending together, right? Uh, but we're, we're welcoming back Kimberly Strafford, who uh, heads up Worry Woos, and is going to join us today to talk a little bit about today's topic, which is self-care, and self-care part two specifically, since uh, we've had Kimberly on in the past. Uh, but I want to welcome everyone. If you tell us in the chat where you're from, we'd love to say hi. We'd love to just get a sense of the audience we're talking to today. We put up a little poll to get a sense of uh, what grade you're in. Uh, today was the first day back at school for my little ones. I have a third grader and a kindergartner. And uh, they've, been, they've been going to school virtually for about a month now, and they went back. And I definitely have some takeaways that I'd love to share. Overall, it was super positive. They loved it. Um, they had their masks on the entire time and it didn't seem to bother them. And uh, it, was, it was great, but uh, we're gonna jump in. I, I wanna make sure I give Chris and Kimberly a chance to really weigh in and talk through some of the topics in our recent blog. Um, but hello to everyone and just type in the chat. I will get you in there. We will answer your questions and we really want this to be a, you know, a, a discussion around this very, very important topic. But Chris, why don't you start us off? Like, you told me a couple times now that this blog kind of wrote itself. What, what, what does that mean? Like, you had a lot of great kind of comments in there, you know? How did... Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm really fortunate. Uh, first of all, I'm, um, you know, I'm, I'm uh, my husband's retired from the military now, but that means that I have friends from all over the country who are educators, uh, you know, educators attract educators. And so um, I was really fortunate. I actually just kind of crowdsourced this in social media and had a ton of people reply kind of with what they were seeing and what they're feeling and what their best tips are to be sure that they're surviving this year that, you know, <laughs> I think when we conceived of this, you know, these webinars this fall, we didn't really know what school would look like, but I think we were hopeful that it would look more like traditional school than the spring did. And where we find ourselves is somewhere in the middle, right? Not completely where we were in the spring, not where it used to be. And depending on where you are in the country or by county or by school, it's some mix of all of it. And, you know, uh, I know your kids just went back today, Dennis. I have a daughter who's in college, who's also an ed major and is student teaching at a school that was full online or full opt-in. And you made that decision in July. Um, my youngest is doing hybrid. So she's at school two half days a week, non consecutively, which is kind of crazy. And then my, uh, my son, who's in the middle of the two girls is completely online. So we've got a mix of all of it at our house. And, um, uh, and as a parent, I know, uh, and a working parent, right, it's a little bit of a zoo for all of us. But, um, but that's the reality we find ourselves in. We're excited to see all of you here. Uh, looking forward to hearing what you're experiencing, both in the classroom and, and personally, and learning from Kimberly uh, about what we can do to kind of um, be sure that we're taking the best care of ourselves. You know, that this sort of you can't pour from an empty vessel thing resonates, right? Because if we don't be sure that we're meeting our needs, how are we ever going to sort of um, give our best to our students, you know, no matter what level we teach and no matter where we are, uh, it's so vital. So mm -hmm. Kimberly, I, I know when you were here in May, it was probably my favorite uh, webinar that we've done. And I encourage all of you to go back and take a peek at that if you haven't seen Kimberly before. Uh, and I think today, you know, in sort of uh, school year part two, <laughs> what do we do when it's more prolonged? And, and how do we make the transition so that we're, we're safe and we're preserving sort of our mental health and our physical health uh, through the semester? Yes, um, I, I'm so happy to be back. I just really think it's, it's so important to continue the conversation, especially since we've left survival mode in a way. And now we have, you know, we're in it, we're in it to win it kind of thing. And um, how that changes your focus, because, you know, as strong people and educators and, and human beings, you, you can survive a lot, you know, when you know there's an end in sight, you know, there's, you know, I can handle this until, or I can handle that or knowing. And um, now that we are into this great wide open of not uh, knowing when this is going to return and if it ever is going to return to exactly the way things were. So there's also this kind of grieving process uh, that goes where you're grieving. And I don't mean that necessarily in a bad 
term or a sad term there, although it is can be, but there's a definite turn of where a reset, if you will, to, okay, when we, when we go back, what are we going back to? And a lot of what we go back to can be determined by how we flourish through this time. Like the takeaways, what you, what you keep. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm a mom of three. We've got uh, a fifth grader, a second grader, and um, a three-year-old. So we have our girls, our older girls are completely online. Uh, they're completely online in our school until November where it gets reassessed. Um, and maybe a hybrid will come out of that, but I'm not 100% sure or confident that's gonna happen. Um, and the three-year-old is going to mommy preschool <laughs> and we just, we, we make it work. Um, so that's um, a little bit of what we're dealing with in, in this uh, household as well. Um, so what I was hoping to reiterate again with our, our mindfulness and our self-care yep. is that it's self-care for what we're dealing with now. So I feel like a lot of us as educators, just the type of people that we are, we can survive on fumes. You know, like we can pull the all-nighter, we can push ourselves, and that's not serving us an anymore because we don't have those little micro moments of, of self-care that we would have to typically in the school, you know, um, walking by your friend's classroom and doing a little wave or a little nudge nudge during a staff meeting or all of those things are, are gone. So it's really on us to advocate for ourselves as much as we advocate for our kids. And that's awesome. kids meaning kids in the house and kids in the classroom as well. That's awesome. I want I, I, I think that's great. I'm excited to dive into that. And real quick, I just want to draw attention to Chris's question in the chat, which is, uh, are you teaching on campus or online or both? In fact, what was today? Was today a field day, a virtual day? Would love to hear from this group if you're willing to share. Mm -hmm. And uh, Kimberly, I think you're exactly right. You know, I was, we, we keep in touch with our son's second grade teacher from last year. And, she, you know, they had officially had, their, we're, we're doing a hybrid model at our school. So mm -hmm. half the school goes certain days, half the school goes the others. And she was just talking about how incredibly stressful it is to try to meet the needs of both students in the classroom and mm -hmm. actually sent their the blog post, Chris, and she really enjoyed it. <laughs> uh, but, but why don't we start from there? If we can dive right in, I'd love to talk a little bit more about the mindfulness piece that we should commit to, that we need to utilize, that we need to make sure we make time for, Kimberly, because I do think that's something we neglect. Uh, well, self-care period, right? But right. I do think we kind of neglect and we kind of just go, go, go. We kind of yeah. just... We're going to react. We're going to do what we can. But yeah, I mean, I'd love to hear a little bit more about how we can, you know, stay yes, in the moment, you know. Absolutely. Um, I think part of it, too, is that go, go, go is almost, for some of us, like kind of a badge of honor, you know, like, oh, you know, <laughs> I, I see you are and I raise you, not, not in a malicious way or not in, you know, a competitive way, but it's just who, what brought us to, you know, care for other people you know, in our, in our chosen fields. So to have the time to give to yourself is, is a hard um, lesson to teach yourself. Just like, I feel like sometimes doctors can be the worst patients. Yeah. Teachers can be the, the worst, um, not the worst learners, but the ones that are, you know, um, hard to take that extra step for them. Right. They don't follow their own advice that they exactly. give students, exactly. right? Yeah. Exactly. So um, one of the, the newer um, tips that I have been using and utilizing in is, you know, in, in, a, in response to boundaries, especially being online, online doesn't close. You know, the bus doesn't come to pick up online learners and the doors don't close and you can't put it behind you. Your computer's in your house, you know, your safe space, all of that stuff. And I've noticed that some of um, our friends and our teachers have been putting in their, you know, little signature line, like I am not, I answer emails on Monday, Wednesday, Fridays, or I am unavailable from 8 p.m. to 8 a.m. Monday, Wednesday, Friday. You know, I, and some folks even say like, I use that time to reflect or I use that time to, uh -huh. you know, and I know it's almost seems 
scary to, oh, I don't want, you know, teachers to think, uh, parents to think I'm slacking off or no, you know, they, everyone has to have a downtime. And just because you're accessible 24 hours a day doesn't mean that you have to be. Mm -hmm. And you're, if you think about the energy that you have for a certain amount of time and the way you can either spread it out, you know, if you spread it out through 24 hours, it's a very thin layer, yeah. but if you give it in chunks, then it's much more um, prominent and it's much more available. Yeah. So instead of saying I can do, you know, I can go as long as I need to. Um, if you focus on the, the smaller chunks of time and really give that, you know, that amount, then you'd see yourself hopefully a little bit better off for it. Um, that was just the first one, like the new, the latest one that I've come across that I really I, starting to hold. I think it's a great tip. Chris, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. yeah um, I was going to say from, from the blog this week, um, you know, one of, one of the educators that had weighed in had said, you know, I'm really trying to be mindful about all the things that I'm doing. And so I'm compartmentalizing and, and sort of prioritizing that, you know, this is my time for this and this yeah. is my time for that. And I think when you're a student, you're taught to use a planner, right? Because right. that helps you kind of keep all your classes in order and give them mm -hmm. boxes. And I think as you transition into the workplace, either as an educator or, um, you know, an adjunct or you're, you know, working as a nurse clinically and then teaching, mm -hmm you know, part-time, um, that sometimes that planning and that real compartmentalization falls apart. And to your point, you know, I can do all things. I have actually three jobs right now. You know, mm -hmm. I'm teaching, I'm in the clinic, I'm, um, you know, doing these other things. And so, uh, you know, really time boxing, I think, has come back to me, at least, as something that can be really beneficial, and not just with time, but also with energy, right? Like, I'm gonna focus on just this, but I have to keep it, like, a little shorter, you know, to mm -hmm. your point. And I think, that can be really a challenge, I think, when you have so many things plus home, plus kids at home, right. plus my students have kids at home, and so they're not as attentive. And right. so, you know, I'm, I'm looking at some of these educators, and, and some of them have only chatted to all panelists, so please change it so it's all panelists and all attendees so everybody can see, because this stuff is great. Yeah. Um, and somebody had said that they're teaching both hybrid and in class at you know hybrid yeah. extended classroom so in class and online at the same time at the same time yeah so how much how do you how do you ensure that you're giving your best when you're trying to sort of divide even when you're doing one thing right yeah, yeah. it's the well let me give some practical advice here in the go 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 attitude that i haven't been able to shake yet mm -hmm. um but you know we've had situations like that before um you know not for I guess, pandemic reasons, but where just it made sense to try to open up the classroom to as many students as possible mm -hmm. and to kind of create a hybrid situation. And, and the first thing I'd say, Kathy, and to everyone else is in this situation is, you know, to Chris's point, when, when I hear the word mindful, I hear intentional. And so mm -hmm. you, you really have to set aside time for, especially those who are virtual, to be able to connect with the rest of the class or find activities that allow you to gather that input from the virtual students in a similar way you'd be able to instantly from the students who are sitting right in front of you in the classroom. Mm -hmm. and, and there are definitely ways you can do that. I, I, you know, I still think, you know, we've talked about this in the past, but using polls is such a great way to crowdsource uh, just the, the class as a whole, kind of their feelings, their, you know, their, how they're, how they're doing, how you, you know, how you might need to adjust the class moving forward, but that's not going to happen naturally. Right. So right. I, I would just say, be really, really clear with expectations to both the students who are there and who are not just when and how they'll be able to engage with the material so that that way the folks sitting at home, will feel more connected, we will know when it's their turn, right? And so they won't feel left out. They won't have that feeling of, man, I wish I was there uh, because they're not in the classroom. Right. And, 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 and I guess try that, right? Um, and to that end, you know, Quimley, I wanna get back to you. Mm -hmm. I, I'll just say like, hybrid is another curveball, right? It was almost maybe easier when everyone was virtual, right? Exactly. But now you've you got- yeah, yep. you had one place to go. Sorry, I didn't mean to talk over. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> with the virtual, like it's yeah. it's hard sometimes. So yeah, it's it's another situation where you kind of had control of the plates, and then someone threw a whole platter at you, 
and and you're like okay so so now what so the way um that's been helpful to me when and also been talking to with other educators is i don't know if anyone else has um waited tables back in the day but uh yeah when you're waiting tables i remember a bit of advice of you know when you're getting lost in the weeds you're not going to every table you're you're imagining that it's all one table so you are taking you know i'm going to take drink orders i'm going to take drink orders from everyone you know and i'm going to make sure the apps come out for you know well i can go forever on this metaphor but you know what i mean so um the way i see the way hybrid is working is really using those tried and true icebreaker get to know you things that you thought oh you know we'll use them for the usually use them for like the first month um while you're kind of you know, um, creating um, a community, I would really use them all the time, use them the whole year, because you're constantly having to re-pull and re-pull focus. So it's always, you know, saying their names, you know, um, and I love the the polls, Dennis, but for, you know, little ones, or even to keep it all together, like, let me get a hands up, let me get a thumbs up, you know, um, who, you know, let's, let's do the wave, you know, kind of like all of those things to kind of get everybody back and make it feel like we are all together, even though, uh, you know, we're not. But yeah, icebreakers and team building, I think, are huge um, assets to, to have in your back pocket uh, for the entire year. Yeah, Robin had some great advice just about having a sense of humor, allowing oh, for mistakes, being flexible, mm -hmm. being agile, yep. being, being yourself, be genuine, being a real person, you know, don't try to be what you think your students want you to be. I've, I've always told myself that because I think there's just this added level of pressure with the camera on. I don't know yes. if you all feel that way. Mm -hmm. I know I did when I first started teaching uh, online that it just felt like, oh, oh my goodness, like I feel like I'm on TV. Yeah. And so I, I would just say you got, you have to, it's not going to happen right away. So don't, mm -hmm. you know, don't blame yourself if it doesn't, but get to a place where you can really be comfortable. Mm -hmm. And then, and then Kimberly, I, I just for one second, I want to get back to your tip around boundaries because, oh, sure. you know, like I've definitely had professors say like, hey, come drop in any time, but they got to determine when they were actually there for me to drop by. Right. And so yeah. I, I just want to connect the dots to what you were saying in that, like that language no longer applies because you're always going to be by your phone or email. Right. And right. so you just kind of right. have to be a little bit, you know. We're going to have to make little changes, little pivots, yeah. little adjustments to how we normally communicated with students to really be able to not let anyone feel like they were, you know, for me, it's like, I don't want to let a student down. Right. And, and that guilty no, feeling yeah. is something hot. I mean, again, I think it all ties back to like, you need to take a moment to breathe. Right. And right. say what's been working, what hasn't, what I did day one is not going to be what I do at the end of day one even. Right. right and, and right. you know, but yeah. But, so for a couple of points on that, that just got me thinking, yeah. set, um, even just changing your vocabulary and, and we can acknowledge, we can have virtual office hours. You know, my virtual office hours are four to six on Thursdays or mm -hmm. um, uh, things of that nature. And I, I understand that we all think we have to be on, but we wouldn't, we don't expect it of others necessarily. So like, for instance, I am really eager to, to write my second grade te uh, second graders teacher an email. And I really, I really wanted to get it out. Like, because I just saw what she was doing. I think she was phenomenal. I was like, I have to do this before I forget. So I sent her an email and I know I sent it fairly like later in the evening, but it wasn't, I didn't expect her to respond. I don't want her <laughs> to respond. Do you know what I'm saying? So. Like, so when, if you're in the position where you're, you know, about to turn on Netflix, you're about to wind down for the night, you're like, I'm just going to check one more thing, right? And you check and you see that email from that student that she's, you know, he or she's just your heart and you, you know, and, or it's a parent or any of those things, just because they wrote it does not mean that you it wrote it at night does not mean that you have to respond to it at night. I, and I, yeah. they might've just... If you think of it, it might have been something that, that they just had to get off their chest before they forgot the next thing, right? So yeah. before they could tick off their to-do list or I did list and they wanted to get it out. And 
good for them. Like, I think that's so great. And that's self-care right there. At the same time, it's, it doesn't have to be responded to in real time. Yeah. I, I love it. I think, uh, Real quick, Chris, you know me, I love the practical tips, right? Like we <laughs> talked about this in the past, but an auto respond yep. can be a great way to just set expectations clearly. Scheduling your outgoing emails was something mm -hmm. we talked about in previous yep. sessions, right? Just if you consistently respond at a certain time, you may have pre-scheduled it, but mm -hmm. then they'll get used to that cadence and everyone will, again, they'll feel like they're it, there's a plan, right? right. Which, right. which there always is, right? And then, and then the last thing I'll throw out there is, for those of you who are comfortable, especially those who are in the college or graduate level, right. there are ways to have community chats these days. There are a lot of programs out there. Uh, WhatsApp is probably the most well-known, but if, 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 I don't know the privacy policies your university follows, but if the students are comfortable, there may be opportunities to not have to respond to each individual email because that takes a lot of time and energy, right? But if you are able to respond to a whole group of students at one time, you can kind of, you know, really be a lot more efficient and also let the students be able to benefit from the questions that others may be asking and that they didn't even think to ask. And, and then what you'll find, what's been the most beautiful in the classes uh, that ultimately gel together is that they start helping each other. Uh. That's kind of like what we do here. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, we have such great tips coming from everyone who attends mm -hmm. and it's just been such a great community, you know, within all that's happening. So anyway, those are some of the couple practical tips if you haven't been implementing that you can maybe think about yeah. um, just drawing from previous sessions. Yeah, Chris, one, of the, one of the things I'll throw out there too is that, you know, when you establish boundaries and you follow through on them, mm -hmm. um, you know, it's a conditioned response, right? Students expect to hear from you in, it's sort of a time frame. And so when they do respond to you at like 11 o'clock at night because students are gonna be up late and you're trying to go to bed and have some sort of normalcy, um, you know, they're going to be used to not hearing from you until the next morning or whatever your boundaries are personally. And I think, you know, every time you make an exception to that and you're telling them to take care of themselves, you're not following through, you know, kind of back to that doctors are the worst patients thing, right? You know, <laughs> you need to follow through when you set the boundaries and not always have your phone by your side. And if you're checking it during a commercial or something, when you're watching, you know, TV with your family or something, yeah. resist that urge. And I think um, that's really important. I, I think one thing, Kimberly, I, I wanted to ask you about that I've heard a lot from, from educators is this, this real importance of having kind of your tribe and reaching out to your peers when you're not all on campus together at the same time, or, you know, you can't go have coffee in the morning because the break rooms are closed or like the, the social aspect of teaching and kind of the shared burden of loving on your students has also been disrupted. And yes. especially if you're home based now, right? Like when's the last time you you know, met casually for coffee with a colleague um, the way that we used to, right? It's just not the same. And so, you know, what do you, what do you, what advice do you have for that? Where, you know, you, you feel more alone now because you kind of are. <laughs> yes. Yes. And I think the first bit of, um, you know, my advice towards that is to own that and let that be said and let that be okay to say, you know, um, it's, it's getting to a point where, we need to remind ourselves and that simply stating how you feel gives you an extra step towards solving whatever outside influence that might be causing you to feel the way that you're going to feel. Um, so right off the bat, you know, I've tried to retrain my brain lately to really say, I feel lonely or I feel frustrated right now, or I feel insecure or anxious that I haven't answer that email or things like that. But so stating how you feel um, and reach reaching out, you know, so the need to reach out is still there. The benefits of reaching out are still there. So we just need to connect the two and figure out how to, how to do it. So how do you do it? Um, I know it sounds really silly, but, um, or it could sound silly. Uh, I've had complete conversations where I'm crying laughing just with, um, I always say them wrong, gifs or memes or like the silliest, like, or the bitmojis or all that, like sending someone a little like crack up, like girl, you know, or any of those, those little things. I, it sounds so simple and it sounds 
I, I don't know. I don't know what it sounds like, but I'm assuming it doesn't sound very professional, but, um, you know, off, off time, off work, um, just a little nod, you know, or a, how you doing kind of thing to someone via text or, you know, use the technology, um, text or Facebook or, you know, um, all the others that are out there. Um, I find that to be really helpful. Text chains, I also find to be really helpful. We have, um, we're blessed with a really beautiful neighborhood and a lot of, a lot of folks in our neighborhood are teachers. And um, so we have like a little neighborhood text chain going on. Um, we've also started um, outdoor and virtual book clubs um, have been really kind of picking up again because you read the book on your own time by yourself and then you get, you find someone to talk about it with. Um, and just really sticking to, everyone is coming from such a place of truth and such a place of um, love and, and compassion, I feel. Like the humanity has really been, I feel, um, restored in a lot of ways. Some places, not so much, but I feel like this is our time to, to rise up with it and finding those little moments um to send talk to your best friend or talk to your your coworker like you would talk to your best friend or talk to yourself like you would talk to your best friend and then make sure that you are then more capable to to do a reach out to someone else I, I I really like that. We're not alone in this, right? And that's maybe what we need to remind ourselves of. Um, because I, l listen, I'll play the teacher role, I guess. I, the reason I'm always at my computer is because I'm, I feel guilty because yeah. I wish I could be doing more. I, you know, I think I've said this in the past, in the past webinar, but like, I feel like there's always something I could be doing more and I feel constrained by the mm -hmm. entire situation that we're in. Um, and, you know, and, and I can only imagine if I'm feeling this way, how the students must be feeling through this. And I don't know if anyone agrees, um, you can maybe chime in the chat, yeah. but, but I, you know, I think what you're saying is so right and so important that we need to be there for each other. We need to rise up together. We need to set those boundaries and then stick to them. Yeah. Um, I think that was pretty much the theme of this first half hour is you need to give yourself that space and and recognize that you know I, I think a couple of people have said it carmen said it really well we you know we kimberly you talked about being out of survival but like it's a different kind of survival now right mm -hmm. it's like and you know and, and that was the whole theme of your blog chris right yeah. can't serve from an empty vessel which yeah. is something i have to remind myself of and okay okay so to that end then, uh, Chris, I, do you want to add something? I, I do have an, I, I, uh, yeah. I was just going to say, like, I think, you know, we're talking about boundaries, we're talking about all this stuff, and it's, it, it kind of sums up in a way also to say, let yourself off the hook, right? You know, nobody has all the answers here. Uh, and as educators, sometimes you can feel like that's kind of your job, right? You know, right. You're, you're talking about things that you're passionate about. You love your students. You know, you're there very much on purpose. Mm -hmm. um, uh, certainly not to get rich. And so, you know, <laughs> you're, you're there to pour in and to love on them and then, you know, kind of have that relationship with students. And I think, um, you know, you can feel that extra burden, especially if your students are struggling and especially if they're challenged in multiple ways, whether it's, um, you know, where they're trying to access from and that sort of inequality there with the digital divide or mm -hmm. um, just the fact that they're challenged with their kids or, you know, you, you put all that pressure on yourself to like solve things. And I right. think, you know, those boundaries and that, that, you know, surprising colleagues with like a little bit of love so that you feel a little bit better, mm -hmm. like all of those things together really um, help kind of let yourself off the hook for the craziness of the situation that you can't control. Um, you know, kind of hold it more with open hands rather than kind of trying to, you know, grasp and solve all the things, which I right. think is kind of the, the, the natural path of, um, of the educator, you know, especially in situations where it gets hard, like, you know, you want to put on your super cape as, as one of our other guests, Chris Williams, yes. who's actually joining us later this month, um, has said, you know, you put on your, your, your superhero cape and you're trying to like do all the things. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, it, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, I was just, um, wanted to talk a little bit more about the fact that we are, 
being who we are and i noticed in one of the chat the it's it's just we're all and i know it's generalizing but we all can be cut from the same cloth you know so if you are reminding yourself of why you got into teaching and um nobody majored in pandemic teaching <laughs> like no one's like oh i've got my, my major in that um so we are all doing what we do under ridiculous circumstances at this point so to acknowledge that and to move forward with that not necessarily like excusing it like so i i hear a lot of people say like oh i get anxious if i don't answer the email right away because i don't want people to think i'm slacking and i don't want to you know all those things i would challenge you to just keep asking your yourself questions about that like why why do I feel like my self-worth is wrapped up in being of service? Why do I feel like if I take any self-care, it's, it's selfish? Why? And if you even just kind of free write about that experience, like free write your answers and so that you are detached a little bit and you can take a look like, oh gosh, I really, I must really think that if I wrote this down, you know, kind of thing. Um, asking yourselves those questions can really kind of get to the core of it, and then your gift to yourself for doing that work is a self-care yeah. to go around. To I, I think that it, we're on the same page. That's actually the question you've read my mind in terms of what I was going to ask you. Um, and pre-writing sounds like something I would never do on my own, right? Yeah. And, and yet I can totally see how that would be. Yeah. Anytime you write something out, it just looks like something you can manage and exactly. something that you can understand and grasp, which is sometimes the biggest problem. It's like, why am I feeling this way? Right. So that's, that's helpful. Yeah. Um, okay. So before we dive into that, I do want to address a couple questions around mm -hmm. engaging online learners super quick. I, I want to give you the one minute answer. I know our colleague Dan Strafford has shared a webinar we did in the past, but um, the big thing for me as an, as an online instructor is number one, setting expectations, right? Making, you know, we talked about learning objectives in a past webinar. We've, we have blog posts on that, like just having clear learning objectives around what you're trying to accomplish will really help your students have the right frame of mind and the right expectations mm -hmm. Two, get them participating. And that could be you know, it can be, it doesn't have to be something that happens in front of the entire class. It could be space to try something on their own. So mm -hmm. in other words, after we do a couple questions, I might give them two minutes to try a question even on them by themselves. Then I would say having an output, meaning having something that the student can look back on as this is what I did in class today, whether that's something they created throughout that session, or it was something that you know, is something you have prepared as like, here is the material that we covered. And then, and then just like we're talking today, giving them the, the mission, the, the clear direction on self-reflection, giving them that space to actually absorb and say, okay, what did I just do? That felt like a blur, right? And a lot of times we kind of keep going on as students too. We keep going, 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 and we never think back to connect the dots. It's like watching a confusing movie and then not taking the time to watch the ending, right? It, right. It's never going to make sense. You're going to hate it and you're never going to watch it again, right? But if you forcefully connect the dots for them as the instructor and really show them what they've been able to accomplish in that time, I think you're going to get, you know, and, and all this doesn't have to happen overnight, right? Little by little, if you're intentional about your learning objectives, you'll start seeing that a, a plan will start to form and, and eventually you'll all be on the same page in terms of what you're trying to accomplish because otherwise, it's going to just feel like a whole bunch of YouTube educational videos that happen to be live, but don't have much more engagement beyond that. Mm -hmm. So I, I hope that was helpful. I did a, you know, a little side, you know, thing here, but I, I hope that was helpful and something that you can uh, uh, think about. And we have tons of resources in our, in our blog that you can jump back to, but okay, back to this topic and please feel free to keep chiming in, in the chat. Uh, Kimberly, I want to get back to you. Uh, Chris, I obviously, I think you want to get into, but let's say we set the boundaries. Mm -hmm. Let's say we follow them. Let's say we all commit to understanding the feelings that we're having. Mm -hmm. So I want to keep going on that same path. So pre-writing, why we're feeling that way. Mm -hmm. Sounds like a really, really great use of our time. Mm -hmm. um, I think in your blog, you know, 
for me, stay still was probably one of the yes. most, that's something I have a hard time doing, as you can probably tell, right? But that was, that was one of the biggest <laughs> things. Um, so but it goes what, both what, ways. How, right? how, <laughs> how like, else can it, we use that time <laughs> set aside? How do we use it for good, you know? But it was both, right? It was like, I, I had equal people that were like, get moving. Yeah, it was stay like, get still. moving, stay still. <laughs> you know, just do yeah. something different. I mean, is, is yeah. that half the battle, right? Yeah. Because, you know, I, I, I'm actually, a couple people in the chat are like, you know, I teach nursing. And, and for 10 years, I worked with nursing schools uh, before I moved over fully onto the learning science team here at Kaplan. And, um, you know, man, there's n uh, not to not to marginalize anybody else on the call, but no. man, you know, nurse educators, they, they, they love their patients, they are clients, uh, they love their students, right? And uh, just pour out, pour out, pour out. And there used to be an on the go all the time, you know, and then you come in and you have to teach didactic sessions online and you're here the whole time. So, you know, the, the switch up there is, you know, get out and walk around the house twice, you know, I don't, yeah. I don't know, how do you, sort of make up for the fact that you're everything's different and your body's got to do something different to kind of keep up with your mind i don't know <laughs> it's tricky yeah um i would say and i think this is really important because we're kind of getting into this because everyone you know wants to help and so we're almost getting self-help overload <laughs> to some point you know it's like oh try this do this all that stuff so i I started thinking it's really important to, if something doesn't work, it doesn't mean nothing works. It just means, and we've all had to do it, is you just try something else. So if one thing, if you try to sit still and you're like, heck no, this is not working. Listen to your body, listen to what you need. If you need to hammer it out on a, you know, on a pillow, go whack a pillow for a couple of seconds. If you need to take some deep breaths, take those beautiful deep breaths. You know, if you, if you need to go send a, a meme to somebody, then it's, those are the things that we can't solve for you because we're not you. So if you are able to find what works, don't, don't feel bad that it might take a couple or don't feel like giving up because it, you haven't found the one thing that clicks for you yet, you know, and it might not be just one thing. It might be five things. And one day it might be a cup of tea and the next day it might be, I need to run around my backyard. You know, um, there's a lot out there. There's a lot of help out there. There's a lot of information out there. And it's just so important that it's so personal that it has to click for you. I mean, that makes a ton of sense. And um, <laughs> I'm with Anthony as well. Like sitting still doesn't help me feel off the hook, right? But if I combine that sitting still mm -hmm. with, you know, last time we did a breathing mindfulness mm -hmm. exercise, I have, I'll be honest, I've <laughs> done a shorter version of what we did last time, you know, but even those 10 seconds can be a difference maker and kind of, you know, like put things into perspective. Like, again, I, I like what you just said. I want to say it again. Just because something doesn't work doesn't mean like everything's yeah, broken, yeah. right? It's not all working. There, there are, there are, it's just, instead of trying to change everything overnight, make small iterative changes, mm -hmm. right? And, and, and no matter what, I, here's one thing I do want to say loud and clear. You are doing an amazing job, right? And you may not feel that way, but I bet your students would share the same if, if we could get them here. Um, this is, it's a crazy time. And, and having a teacher, having someone be that support is, it's, I, I feel blessed, right? I feel blessed having them log in in the morning, right? But uh, Chris, go ahead, I see you. Yeah, I was looking at the chat. I mean, there's so much good stuff in here. Um, and again, be sure you're chatting to all panelists and all attendees so everyone can benefit. Um, we're getting a little extra side stuff that not everybody is sharing. So I'm trying to share it when I can. But um, I, I really like this sort of um, input from Robin here where she added a self-care module where they're reflecting back to her what students are doing to take care of themselves. Right. Um, you know, we would be wise to do the same things with our peers, right? And sort of holding ourselves accountable for um, from prioritizing that. And I think, um, 
you know, I really appreciate the fact that you said, you know, keep trying different things because the number of people who have said, well, I've just found myself centered in yoga or right. man, the Peloton is all that in a bag of chips. Right. <laughs> uh, you know, um, <laughs> you know, I, 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 there are certain bandwagons I've jumped on and other ones that I just know is Go past by. not the, the past thing, by. Yeah, not the thing. <laughs> you know, really Ben and Jerry's meets my need. <laughs> you know, I just don't have to work much harder than that. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then, Okay, well, can we talk a little bit about the learning a new thing as well? Because I feel like... Oh, that's, yeah, that was such a, like, oh, that makes so much sense. Right? Yeah. I mean, we're all supposed to model lifelong learning, right? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. you probably got into education because you're at least curious right. about many things. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and uh, the, the woman that took the time to respond to that uh, particular question in the blog, um, you know, has been a lifelong learner herself, went back and got an advanced degree, um, after she had kind of finished her first career and has become a mental health counselor after being an educator for 30 years. And so kind of did that pivot and, and the part of her job that she loved the most was really working within the family structure. And so now being able to give back that way, um, you know, she, she was like, yeah, you know, you just got to lean in and try something new. And I love that enthusiasm, especially from a veteran educator who's been there and kind of walked the walk and really reflected on what made a difference to her. And, and whether that's a little thing like, oh, I'm going to learn how to, you know, cross stitch or right. a big thing. You know, I'm going to change my entire career path to focus on a priority for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I've been trying that and I was finding myself uh, apprehensive about it because it's like, I don't have the brain function to focus on something else right now. And what changed for me, what got me to change that was, I was like, so I have to be very, very passionate about it. Like I have to want to like, want to love to do it. So if for, like you said, like the cross stitch and things like that. So I've started, you know, growing herbs and, and figuring out how different herbs and smells and essential oils and things can do. It. And I can talk forever about it because I'm a big old nerd about that stuff. Um, but it had to be something like that, that I could focus on. Like I'll try to read, um, some articles sometimes and or something and I'm like I can't I can't focus I can't there's too many clouds going by with too many other things thinking on it so I would give myself the gift of 15 minutes of doing something I totally love that may not have anything else to do with what I've based my life on you know um, not my um, so I would really also suggest if you, you feel like it doesn't have, you don't have the brain capacity right now, focus on something so small, a, a little hobby if you can, and master, master that, or at least give your energy, your 15 minutes of energy to that to help move it along. But I loved, loved, loved that part of the blog. I thought it was so great. That's, that's awesome. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. That makes me feel a little, it makes me feel better for sure. You know, like I, I know because the thing is like, you say make space, you say take boundaries, but I, I think sometimes making the space is sometimes worse because now you're left at this time that you're not sure how to make the most of. But, right. but I'm hearing already things that we can do to either feel better about what we're doing or, or just being in a situation where we can be more understanding of ourselves. Um, or um, as Robin is saying, you know, understand what mastery is all about. Like, why is that the fourth M? And, and kind of be able to experience those benefits for ourselves. And to that end, uh, realize that doing something for yourself is extremely important as part of the process of being present, of right. being, you know, available for your students. Because, you know, again, kind of going back, it's like, it's not just about serve, 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 right? right? I think back to when you mentioned things like that, Dennis, to the um, the experiential learning cycle, which I'm sure people, I know I'm a little dating myself a little bit about when I was in grad school, but, um, and that the, the role of processing and where you take something, you know, how does it apply to me? And then how does it apply to the world? And I, I think of that as the same with self-care. Like if you apply it to you, then it goes, viral for a better, you know, lack of a better word. If you apply it to you um, yourself, then you are in a place of so much more compassion 
and so much more um, forgiveness and, and joy than, uh, than you were when it was just, just out. You know what I mean? If it's just out for everyone, there's nothing inside, then that's the whole, it gets kind of dissipated and there's no foundation underneath it. So I just, you had mentioned that earlier and it just kind of sparked in with me about going into going out. Man, I love that because, you know, it, it, it's interesting, right? Because, you know, the random acts of kindness thing, right? You, you think about it, you're doing it because you really want to like, you know, bless someone or love somebody yeah. like, you know, you just want to do something little yeah. and inevitably you wind up feeling better because of that, even if that wasn't your initial intent, which I always find so interesting, right? Like you do something that you think is pretty altruistic, but then at the end you're like, man, I actually feel better for having done that. Right. So it's definitely a win-win, which, yeah. you know, is, is kind of the best thing you can get. But I, I love that idea of how, um, you know, even applying something little to yourself can then benefit other people. You know, I, I, I bake a lot. Nice. <laughs> I'm getting myself guilty right here with the Ben and Jerry's and the baking, but, um, but like I'm uh, currently in physical therapy for uh, recovering from ankle surgery that I had a couple oh. months ago. And, um, and it's like, I can't repay my PT, right? Like right. I, I, there's nothing I can do. Right. right. But his birthday was this week. And so I knew what his favorite cake was because it had come up in conversation when you're there as often as I am. Yeah. And so, you know, I was able to do that. And, and for weeks about it, I was excited about it because, you know, I could do that and I could give back. And I wound up being way happier than he was probably about the whole experience and the planning and the execution because it was a surprise and like just the whole thing. Right. And I think that was a pretty little thing. Um, but it was a big thing to me and hopefully it meant a lot to him at the end. And so I think um, there's a lot of those things that we can do if we search that out. Like that didn't take a, a lot of time really, but right. it was a good mental break from my day and from mm -hmm. stress and from whatever, because I could like think about that, like, oh, I'm going to do this. Right. And yes. so I think kind of planning ahead for some of those things too can be beneficial because it's, you know, gives you something to look forward to mm -hmm. when we don't know how long the stress is going to go. So, right. Um, right. so that, you know, not that you want to make Boston cream cupcakes, but you know, if you could plan ahead for something a few weeks from now, it gives you yeah. something to anticipate and right. um, something you can control. Exactly. And then on, on that too, it's something, it's changing your, your way of thinking about it in, a, in opposed to, you know, before um, where you think, oh, I got to do this. I got to do that. And, oh God, I got to make a cake for my, my physical therapist. I can't believe I get this thing too. Right. So to change your mindset of, um, this is something actually my sister told me, um, to say, instead of, I have to, I get to. <laughs> so something as simple of, oh, did someone just put that in there? Ah! <laughs> Chris, sorry. <laughs> All right. You got to send me my Boston cream cupcakes now. Um, yeah, that's exactly what, what my sister used to tell me. You get, you get to, not I have to. Wow, that I, was I, I love that. And, and we don't all have to be a goody two-shoe instructors either, right? Like it doesn't all right. just have to be about, you know, mastery and, and, you know, baking yummy things for people around us, right? Can, you know, how about like a, a good video game or a, uh -huh. a TV, sh a binge-worthy TV show? I, I just want to throw out like, there is... Again, just you, whatever that means, you have to make sure that you are looking out for yourself, right? Because we're always in this mode of looking out for others. And, and you know, I, I, I like that. I like that a lot that I get to versus yeah. that I have to. That's, that's, a, that's a big deal, right? It and is. That's, it is. that's how something, that's how you keep the passion that you're talking about, Kimberly, from, mm -hmm. from before. And, and it's, a, it's a choice to do it. I, I really like that. Um, okay, in the last 10 minutes or so, I do want to shift gears a little. So we've talked a little bit about some ground rules we need to set for each other. Boundaries, looking out for each other, and things we can do with the time we now have if we are able to manage to keep to those boundaries. Mm -hmm. uh, but then can we talk a little bit about growth mindset and some of the ways we stay on track? Because... You know, I think we always preach that in our classes, and I think it's sometimes the first thing that goes out the door when something goes wrong. I just, I find myself blaming myself. I find mm -hmm. myself saying, oh, goodness, I, I, you know, I'm the worst. Like, it's yeah. all these things come cascading down. So what are some of the ways, yeah, we have these practical steps, but how do we, 
how do we, again, practice what we, you know, walk the walk uh, right. of what we're talking about? Right. Well, I think a big part of that is, is what you said, you know, the not even letting yourself off the hook. Um, I, I, I love the idea of that, but almost part of it sounds like you have, you did something wrong. Like you have to like apologize for something. And I, I love the idea of that the word yet, you know, at the end of the growth mindset. Um, so I think using that and also when you are flooded with those, that guilt, oh, it's such a bugger. <laughs> it's like when you're, when you're flooded with those thoughts, it doesn't quite work to, to squish them down because they're strong and they're going to come back up is kind of what we do when we talk meditation and mindfulness is we acknowledge them and we have them go their merry way or we try to as much. So I often uh, visualize them on clouds and that, okay, that's, that's a negative thought or that's a, 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 a thought that's not serving me, um, I guess is, is probably a, a more compassionate way of looking at it. A thought that's not serving me, I'll acknowledge it. Yes, I get it. I understand I'm terrible with technology. Whew, that's gonna go by because so are a lot of people. And um, you know, that's just one of those things that we need to embrace. So I would say keeping that growth mindset, keeping that word yet in your vocabulary for yourself, not just you know, for the situation or for your students, um, keeping that idea of those, those clouds going by. And also we talk, we talked a little bit about, you know, what would you say to your best friend or, you know, what, what would you do? How would you envision you as your student? Like, what would your student think you as you student, this is think of you as a teacher and ask yourself those questions, ask yourself, you know, do the, do you, would you find yourself sitting back saying, oh, she's a slacker. Oh, she doesn't know what she's doing. She has no idea what she's talking about and I don't know why I'm here. Um, I would probably bet more often than not the answer is no, that is not how your students perceive you. Um, you are their line to the outside world right now. Uh, you are their caring, the, you know, caring individual who is not a family member or in their um, you know, nuclear community that cares about them, that, you know, meets them with a smile and, and meets them with a focus um, every day in some way, shape or form. Um, so yeah, keeping that growth mindset um, in, in your head and in your thought and in your heart and knowing that you are, and this is, sounds a little trite, but you're your own worst critic. You really are. Like, you know, you might see yourself as a complete mess <laughs> and, and that's okay. Um, but there's so many people that are so much more better off because of you, because of who you are and what you do. There, there are many people that are better for it. Yeah, I think, um, you know, one of, my, one of my colleagues here, Ed Kaplan, had talked about, you know, kind of your noble purpose. Like, mm -hmm. why did you get into this in the first place, right? Yeah. I mean, educators have a different opportunity to influence the future, right, than other people. And... Mm -hmm. Um, this whole pandemic and this whole way of learning is really an opportunity to rewrite history of education, right? It's a pivot point. Um, you know, it, it, all of the words that are tossed around so much unprecedented, you know, mm -hmm. it's novel, it's, it's all of these things, but it's also an opportunity hidden in the midst of a giant mess, right? Because we have learned so much since our very first you know, blog that and, and webinar that Dennis and I did way back in March, you know, uh, that everybody was just in the thick of what are we going to do at that point, you know, and at this point, it's still, still kind of a plate of spaghetti, right, that we're trying to straighten out. Right. But at the same point, we are so much smarter about, uh, about so many things, uh, you know, in terms of what works in the classroom and what doesn't and how we're pivoting and how we're balancing. And I think, you know, when we reflect on this, eventually, when it, you know, it switches to whatever the next chapter looks like, or we turn the page, and it's more similar to what we had, or um, feels less, you know, stressful, um, you know, it, it's an opportunity for those of us in the thick of it to say, what do we do to contribute to the way learning is going to be moving forward? 
Um, you know, I already referenced our, our next webinar with the folks that are joining us there are going to talk about inequality of access and reaching students who are marginalized and those who are differently able, which has been such a concern for so many educators and we hear it all the time from you guys. So we're excited to engage that conversation. And, you know, it's been kind of rough for those sort of students for a really long time, right? So is this an opportunity to try to improve things and level the playing field and make things more accessible by the use of technology that weren't possible in a traditional classroom? And so how can we pivot a little bit, you know, in growth mindset and also in our actions, you know, by saying, we get to do this. We have the opportunity. We can seize our moment in my little classroom and my little online space to try to reach my students that I have charge of. You know, what can I do to improve things? And I think that's such an awesome way to view it, um, even when it feels stressful to kind of step back and say, all right, today's a new day to at least try to you know, move the ball forward. I would say one final thing on that. It just, you just inspired me to uh, remember we are, we've been working with what are we going to do? What are we going to do? What are we going to do? And I think right now we're kind of at that pivotal moment where it's the next question is, who are we going to be? Like, what is it going to be? So once we can kind of change that, and I'm so glad you brought up, Kristen, um, the other challenges um, for other students, all students, it's just, this is our time to really engage everyone and get everybody together and, and say who, what we want the next 50 years of education to be. What do we want it to be, you know? How do we get everybody in here? <laughs> I'm, yeah, Kimberly, it's always so great to have you here. I mean, it's one of the reasons we have to have you back. Like, I, I echo what Susan just said, you know, I was tired too, I'll be honest, but you know, you make me feel guilty in a good way, in a different way, recognizing that I, again, like the things I say to the edge, it goes at every level, right? Like we're trying to help all the educators here, all the teachers here uh, take care of themselves. And, and we sometimes, no matter what, we're going to neglect just because I, I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is about learners, right? It's just, it's, it, you know, you just don't want to waste a moment, but of course, um, of course. Yeah, but but thank you. I you know I think there's some really great practical steps that came out of this, and I'm looking forward to continuing to try to be honest with my own boundaries and and keep moving forward. And um, I, I'd love to hear from yet. both of you. And any any last minute tips? Uh, you know, like what else? What else? You know, I think we've said a lot. I, I for me, what's going to leave the most is that I get to versus that I have to, yeah. right? And uh, we talked about a lot of great things and then the power of yet, right? I think that mm -hmm. those are probably the two things I definitely want to jump back into for sure. Um, but, but what else, what are some of the la last closing thoughts? Jeez, Louise. Um, I, I just think we need to um, acknowledge our inner and outer cheerleaders. Um, I feel like, um, you know, it, it, it hurts my heart to know that so many extraordinary people, so many extraordinary teachers are saying that they're not doing enough and feeling like they're not doing enough. And I just want them to rewrite those pages as possible. Um, that would be my, my big uh, takeaway as far as, or uh, as far as moving forward with that. Um, the only other like practical stuff I would say, you know, don't be afraid, afraid to connect, even though it's online, like connect with that camera, even if it seems a little scary, um, you can unleash your inner Mr. Rogers, <laughs> you know, like he, he spoke right to us and made us feel safe and, and um, that can still work. There's a lot of power in, in empathy and in our, our, um, our faces and um, the way we move and the way we want to engage the other, other students. So um, don't be afraid of that. Don't feel like you have to be in the box that you are being pushed into right now. Um, and that there is always going to be another person that says, I get you, you know, even, even when it feels like there isn't. So find your people. That's great. That's great. Chris, will you close this out? Yeah, we only have a couple seconds left, but man, you guys um, have filled our tanks too. And you know, looking in the chat and appreciate your 
attendance and continuing uh, to lean in. You know, share these with your colleagues. Um, come back and join us in a few weeks for another conversation. Uh, and we look forward to hearing from you. you know, please always feel free that you can reach out to us um, and, uh, and, and know that we'll respond to you if you have any questions or anything uh, that we can help you with uh, from our end. Yeah, thank you all. Have a great rest of your week. Uh, we look forward to seeing you again. Kimberly, we'll have to have you back a third time. Okay. You always have to have the trilogy, right? So. Absolutely. Absolutely. Awesome. This, this is Dennis and Chris and Kimberly signing off for today. Keep, hang in there. Keep at it. We're with you. Talk and you're soon. doing a great job.